Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning dear students welcome to my class this is lecture number 18 in this lecture we will be discussing the growth and development of english education during the period spanning between 1784 to 1857 what was the attitude of the british government when their rule was established in india through the two battles of Plassey in 1757 and the Battle of Bexar in 1764. The English East India Company adopted the policy of non-intervention in the cultural and the educational affairs of the Indians. Why did the English Company not Invo interfere in the educational and the cultural affairs of the Indians. It was mainly due, it was mainly because of the adverse reaction adverse reaction from the native Indians. That is why after the establishment of British rule in India, the English East India Company did not interfere the cultural and educational affairs of the Indians. It was because of the fear from the native Indians. During the period of Warren Hastings as the Governor General from 1772 to 1785, he served as the Governor General. Main attention was paid for Orientalism. Orientalism means promotion of Indian knowledge, promotion of Oriental knowledge was the main attention during the period of Warren Hastings. They wanted to promote and study Indian culture, Indian languages and the history of India. The knowledge of Indian languages and the history and culture of the Indians were required to teach the officials of the English East India Company. So, they could be able to perform better in their job. That is why it was during the period of Warren Hastings, Orientalism was promoted, Oriental learning was promoted. There were a few examples during the period of Warren Hastings for the promotion of Oriental learning or the study and teaching of Indian history, Indian culture and Indian languages. Warren Hastings created Calcutta Madrasa in 1781. It was started with the intention of promoting the study of Islamic knowledge. Then for the study of Indology that is the study of India, Indian history, Indian culture and Indian classics, Indian philosophy. The Asiatic Society of Bengal was created in 1784 during the period of Warren Hastings. This Asiatic Society was created for the study of Indology. Another institution was created at the center of Sanskrit learning in Benares. It was Benares Sanskrit College. It was founded by Jonathan Duncan in 1791. In 1791, the Banara Sanskrit College was created. It was started for the study of Sanskrit knowledge. In 1800, Lord Wellesley, he was the Governor General from 1798 to 1805. It was during the period of Lord Wellesley 
A college was created at Fort William in Calcutta. This college popularly known as Fort William College. This college was created for providing training to the civil servants of the company in Indian languages, vernacular languages, Indian history and Indian philosophy and Indian customs and practices were also taught to the civil servants. So, it was for the purpose of training the civil servants Fort William College was created. It was another example of the promotion of oriental learning, but the court of directors was not in favor of the continuation of Fort William College. So, this college was closed in 1802 and following the closure of Fort William College in Calcutta in order to provide training to the civil servants, another college was created at Halibury in England. It was the East India College. East India College was created for giving training to the civil servants. In the East India College where history of India, legal systems, languages were used to teach to the civil servants on probation. This Halibury College was later abolished in 1858. From 1806 to 1858, the civil servants were provided training at Halibury College or East India College at Halibury. And from 1858, the civil servants began to provide training in British universities. These were the early attempts made by the officials of the English East India Company particularly Warren Hastings for the promotion of oriental learning. But more intervention was required from the side of the government. The government did not interfere. It, these were the efforts taken by the individual officials of the English East India Company like uh, Warren Hastings and Jonathan Duncan, but gov more governmental intervention was required in the educational sector and in order to make more intervention from the side of the government in the cultural and educational affairs of the Indians, Christian missionaries began to exercise pressure on the British government to intervene the educational and cultural affairs of the Indians. Sarampur missionaries in Calcutta played a key role in it. It had already been well established in Calcutta and promoting western learning. In addition to the Christian missionaries, the liberals, utilitarians, and the Orientalist were also exercised mounting pressure on the British government to effectively intervene the cultural and educational affairs of the Indians. Because of this pressure exercised by the Christian missionaries, utilitarians and Orientalist, the English East India Company gave up the practice of non-intervention in the educational and the cultural affairs of the Indians. Through the Charter Act of 1813, an amount of 1 lakh rupees was provided for the cultural and the educational development of the Indians. It was one of the important clause of the Charter Act of 1813. It was for the first time the government took the responsibility for the educational development of the Indians. But once money was granted for the educational development of the Indians, a major controversy arose 
immediately after it. What was this controversy? The controversy was that whether the English East India Company should promote Oriental learning or Western learning. Oriental learning or Western learning. Oriental learning means the teaching of Indian classics, Indian philosophy, Indian mathematics in vernacular languages. It came into known as Oriental learning and what was Western learning? It meant the teaching of European science, European classics, European philosophy, European mathematics in English as the medium of instruction. It came into known as Western learning. While this controversy was going on, a Hindu college was founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy in 1817 at Calcutta. This institution provided both Oriental learning as well as Western learning. And this controversy between the Orientalist and the Anglicist came into known as Anglicist Orientalist controversy. The main controversy was that whether the government would spend the money for the development of Western learning or the Oriental learning. This was the major question between the Orientalist and the Anglicist. The Orientalist was led by Herman Wilson and Prince of Brothers. They included James Prince and Henry Prince. This Orientalist argued for the introduction of the Oriental learning in India. That is the teaching of Indian classics, Indian philosophy, Indian history, Indian languages. They stood for the introduction of the Oriental learning in India. Why did they argue for the introduction of the Oriental learning in India? There were certain reasons behind their demand for Oriental learning. One, to teach British officials the long, local language and culture. By teaching the local language and the culture of the Indians, the British officials would be able to perform better in their job. It was one of the reasons behind the Orientalist demanding the introduction of the Oriental learning in India. In addition to that, there were certain groups who wanted to understand the history and culture of the Indians. The prominent among them was Christian missionaries. What was the intention behind the Christian missionaries, behind the learning of the history and culture of the Indians? These Christian missionaries wanted to easily convert Hindus and Muslims into Christianity. They were aware that by knowing the history and culture of the Indians, they could easily get convert into Christianity. This was the main intention behind the demanding of the introduction of the Oriental system of learning in India by the Christian missionaries. They wanted to easily convert Hindus and Muslims into Christianity and increase the number of Christians. This Orientalist further argued that the complete replacement of Oriental learning by the Western learning would not be acceptable to the Indians. They had a prejudice to Western learning. This was the another argument made by the Orientalist. Now coming to the arguments made by the Anglicists, they were otherwise known as Occidentalists. They were led by Charles Trevelyan. They vehemently opposed 
the introduction of the oriental learning in india and strongly supported for the introduction of the western learning one of the main groups which demanded the introduction of the western learning in india was evangelicals the evangelicals who had believed in the superiority of the christian ideas and the western institutions they considered that the indian institutions and indian knowledge system were inferior and they believed in the superiority of the english institutions western knowledge and the christian ideas that is why the evangelicals demanded the introduction of the western learning in india charles grant and william wilberforce they demand they let the evangelicals demanding the introduction of the western system of learning in india what was the attitude of the indians during the course of orientalist anglicist controversy while this anglicist demanded the introduction of the western learning while the orientalists demanded oriental learning to be introduced in india then what was the attitude of the indians during this anglicist orientalist controversy raja ram mohan roy he argued the introduction of the western learning in india why did raja ram mohan roy demand the introduction of the western learning in india he believed that by introducing the western learning rationalism and scientific approach would develop among the indians you recall that it was during this period indian society was plagued by many evil practices and beliefs like sadi female infanticide caste system child marriage so in order to root out these evil practices in society rationalism and scientific approach were to develop among the indians that is why raja ram mohan roy demanded the introduction of the western learning in india he thought that by introducing it rationalism and scientific temper would develop among the indians another top contender for the introduction of the western system of learning was james mill a utilitarian par excellence he had heavily criticized it, the indian religion and culture he also believed in the superiority of western learning he demanded the introduction of the anglic anglical or western learning in india and while this controversy was going on for long years in 1813 charter act this amount of 1 lakh rupees was provided even after 20 years it was not settled to which kind of learning would the english east india company introduce in india but it was settled only in 1835 even though this amount was granted in 1813 the controversy on what kind of learning should the english east india company introduce in india was settled only after 20 years in 1835 while this controversy was going on william bendick he was the governor general during this period william bendick was the governor general 
during this period he was the first governor general of india all other governor generals were governor generals of bengal william bendick the first governor general of india appointed thomas babington macaulay popularly known as tv macaulay as the president of the general committee on public instruction thomas babington macaulay was appointed as the president of the general committee on public instruction in 1835 once he was appointed as the president of the general committee on public instruction he took the side of the anglicis he was in favor of the introduction of the western learning or english system of learning in india in his famous minute it is popularly known as macaulay minute which dated 2nd february 1835 in this minute he ridiculed the oriental learning and recommended the introduction of the western learning in india and it was through this the english system of learning or the western learning was introduced in india i now go to the certain comments made by thomas babington macaulay in his famous minute macaulay argued that a single shelf of a good european library was worth the whole native literature of india and arabia taken together he believed in the superiority of western knowledge and ridiculed oriental knowledge and in his minute that at 2nd february 1835 he categorically stated the aim of the introduction of the western learning in india what was the aim of the introduction of the western learning in india by the british in india it was clearly mentioned in the macaulay minute of 2nd february 1835 it wants to create a class of indians in blood and color but english in taste in opinions in morals and intellect what do you understand from this the aim of the english system of education or the western learning in india was to create a class of indians to support the britishers at the lowest levels of administration at the lowest levels the britishers required indians to help the british officials be it in civil service or in judiciary at the lowest level indians were appointed and it was for this purpose to help the britishers at the lowest levels of administration the english system of learning was introduced in india for this aim of the introduction of the english system of education by the british in english british in india was clear this opinion stated by thomas babington macaulay through his famous macaulay minute of 2nd february 1835 was accepted by the governor general of india lord william cavendish bendick through a resolution dated 7 march 1835 under this resolution the english system of education was introduced in india once through this resolution of 1835 march english learning was introduced in india the aim of the english east india company was the promotion of western learning following which following this resolution persian was abolished as the court language it was replaced by english as the court language and the publication of books was comparatively 
made free and these books were made available at a low price and once it was decided to introduce western learning in india whether it was for the english east india community to establish schools and colleges across the country for the promotion of english learning among all the people in india it was not possible it was not possible for the british to educate the masses educating the masses was costly so in order to find a problem in order to find a solution to this problem thomas babington macaulay brought the theory of infiltration so it was not possible for the british to provide education to the entire masses providing education to the entire masses was costly through the charter act of 1830 only an amount of 1 lakh rupees was provided so how was it possible for the english east india company to educate the masses with this amount of 1 lakh rupees so thomas babington macaulay developed the theory of infiltration under this theory he expressed that the aim of the english east india company was to educate a few educate a few it was not possible for the company to educate the entire masses because of the shortage of funds so educate a few thomas babington macaulay argued that from this a few people who were educated by the britishers this education would infiltrate to the masses infiltrate this theory developed by thomas babington macaulay came into known as theory of infiltration that is education would infiltrate from the educated few to the masses this theory of infiltration was developed by thomas babington macaulay what was the attitude of the indians when english system of learning or western learning was introduced in india rajara mohan roy even though he died in 1813 before the macaulay minute as you have been told earlier he was in favor of the introduction of the western learning in india he believed that it would develop rationalism and scientific temper among the indians and it would help to root out the evil practices of sadi female infanticide child marriage and caste system so even before the introduction of the macaulay minute raja ram mohan roy was in favor of the introduction of the western system of learning in india but he did not leave to see the introduction of the macaulay minute of 1835 raja ram mohan roy died in 1833 even before the officially the english system of learning was introduced in india but the orthodox section of the indian society what was their attitude their attitude was that the introduction of the western system of learning would re- result the collapse of traditional indigenous society and culture this was the attitude of the orthodox section of the indian society what about the attitude of the middle class the middle class during the period of the mughal empire 
and during the period of the regional dynasties these middle class had occupied higher positions in civil service judiciary and army but with the introduction of the british administration in india the all higher positions in civil service judiciary and army began to occupy by the british states only the middle class in the background of the introduction of the english system of learning believed that by learning english they would get jobs in the services of the english east india company this was the attitude of the middle strata of indian society now once the western system of learning was introduced in india in 1835 the all the funds were used for the promotion of western learning but after 19 years another development took place relating to the western learning or english is the learning in india it was the appointment of the woods despatch of 1854 this despatch was appointed in 1874 with sir charles woods as the chairman woods despatch was appointed in 1854 by the british government it was the another development with regard to the english system of learning or english is the learning in india sir charles woods he was the president of the board of control the board of control was the representative of the the british government controlled the affairs of the english east india company in 1854 sir charles wood was appointed as a committee to study and examine the system of learning which had been introduced in 1835 through the famous macaulay minute and it is suggest measures for further improvement of the education in india and this came into known as woods despatch of 1854 sir charles woods who had a firm belief in the superiority of english institutions in britain this woods despatch of 1854 popularly known as the magna carta of english education in india in 1854 he made the following recommendations for further improve the english system of learning in india what were the recommendations made by sir charles woods through his famous despatch of 1854 in his dispatch of 1854 he categorically stated that the aim of the education in india was promotion of western learning he had a belief in the superior superiority of english institutions so he was in favor of the further promotion of western learning in india he recommended teaching of arts science philosophy and literature of europe european literature european philosophy european science and european arts should be promoted in india it is simply means european knowledge european knowledge should be promoted in india it was one of the recommendations made by sir charles woods through his famous despatch of 
higher education that is from college and university level english must it be the medium of instruction at the college and the university level the medium of instruction was it to be english however as it was not possible to provide education to the entire masses the education would be given only a selected few so in order to spread the knowledge from the selected few to the masses they also gave importance to the study of vernacular languages also it was intended to spread the knowledge from the educated english educated indians to the masses for spreading this knowledge at the elementary level or at the lowest level Woods Dispatch recommended the setting up of vernacular primary schools at the elementary level, at the lowest level. In these vernacular primary schools at the lowest level, the medium of instruction would be vernacular languages or the regional languages of the particular region through which the knowledge would be imparted to the students above the vernacular schools at a primary or elementary level anglo vernacular schools should be created where both vernacular languages and english were to be used at district level affiliated college was to be created and at presidency level university should be created this was the structure recommended by sir charles wood primary level vernacular schools at high school level anglo vernacular schools and above it colleges at a district level and at a provincial level universities would be created it further recommended the introduction of the grant in aid system under this system the private enterprises would be promoted to provide the infrastructural facilities that is the land and the building while the government would provide the salary of the teachers that is a government private enterprise it was to encourage the private enterprises to invest in education since it was not possible for the british government to provide infrastructural facilities to educating the entire masses so the private enterprises should come forward providing building and other infrastructural facilities for providing education to the people but certain conditions were imposed on these private enterprises one was that they would employ only qualified teachers the qualification would be prescribed by the government after appointing these teachers the governmental authority would approve the appointment after checking whether the particular person was qualified or not and proper standard of teaching should be maintained by these private enterprises 
and the government appointed inspectors to inspect these educational institutions from time into time. The education provided the students was not free of cost. The students were required to pay fee for getting education in these institutions. The private enterprises were required to provide secular education. But there were certain drawbacks by bringing these private enterprises into educational field. No doubt, by introducing this grand in system, it was possible to provide education to a larger people. But sometimes these private enterprises engaged in corruptive practices by appointing teachers, by getting money from these teachers. And it was required that to promote secular education. But some private enterprises engaged in providing religious education as well. The next recommendation made by Sir Charles Wood was a department of public instruction was it to be created in five provinces. And in each province, the department of public instruction was it to be headed by a director. What was the duty of this director? to review the progress of education in each province and submit an annual report to the government. A director of public instruction was to be appointed in a province and his duty was to submit report on the progress of education in his province to the government. Another major important recommendation made by Sir Charles Woods was the creation of three universities in India in three major presidency towns. These universities were to be created in Calcutta, in Bombay, in Western India and Madras in South India the universities were to be created. These universities should be based on the model of the University of London, which was created in 1836. The university should consist of a senate, a chancellor at the head, a vice chancellor and the fellows. They were to be appointed by the government in these universities. The Woods Dispatch recommended that they were to be nominated by the government. Even the members of the Senate were not to be elected, but they were to be nominated by the government. The duties of the universities were also clearly defined in his recommendation. These universities were to conduct examinations and confer degrees. In addition to that, the universities were also required to set a professorship in different branches of learning. It also emphasized vocational education. Vocational training would be provided to the students. The need for establishing technical schools and colleges were also emphasized by Woods Dispatch. Creation of teachers training institutions on the English model to provide training to the students, to provide training to the teachers in pedagogy, 
in britain there exist a teachers training institutions to provide training to in service teachers at a regular interval in pedagogy likewise teachers training institutions would be set up in india to provide training to the teachers it also recommended that women education should be promoted in india these were the major recommendations sent by sir charles wood through his wood's dispatch of 1854 from going through the recommendations sent by sir charles wood it is clear that it was the imitation of the english system which had been in existence in britain most of these recommendations tended by sir charles wood were accepted by the british government in india and implemented now let us look which recommendations a british government implemented in india based on the recommendation made by sir charles wood in 1854 one of the recommendations of sir charles wood was the introduction of the department of public instruction in five provinces headed by a director it was introduced in 1855 department of public instruction was created in 1855 in bengal bombay madras punjab and in the northwestern provinces in all these five provinces department of public instruction was created in 1855 and it was headed by a director in each province and with the introduction of the department of public instruction the earlier bodies committee of public instruction and the council of education it got abolished the committee of public instruction and the council of education were no longer in existence these were abolished and it was replaced by department of public instruction in all these five provinces one of the another major recommendation tended by sir charles sud was the creation of universities three universities in calcutta bombay and madras three universities were created first in calcutta in february 1857 in the same year in march bombay university was created in july 1857 madras university was created thus the three universities were created in 1857 one of the another recommendation made by sir charles wood was the promotion of women education jid bedoon who set up girls schools for providing education in calcutta these bedoon institutions got grants in aid from the government in addition to that agricultural institute one of the recommendation of the sir charles wood was the creation of the technical institutions in india an engineering institute was started at a roorkee later to develop one of the prominent technical institutes in india and formed the nucleus of the present day indian institute of technology at roorkee for the next 5 decades the ideas and methods of sir charles wood dominated the educational system in india this period after the passage of the sir charles wood's recommendations 
the period witnessed rapid westernization of education from 1854 onwards india witnessed rapid westernization of education in later universities were created in other part of the country and promoted higher education with this the indigenous education was replaced by western learning in india even though in these educational institutions the british had served as headmasters and principals only in the later stage indians were appointed to head these educational institutions the christian missionaries they played a key role in spreading education among the people as bedoun enterprises also came forward it was the best example bedoun schools in calcutta were the best example of the private enterprises in the field of education it provided education to girls now coming to the evaluation of the english system of education introduced by the british you now recall that since it was costlier for the british to educate the entire masses thomas babington macaulay developed the theory of infiltration that is from the selected english educated few he believed that education would filter down to the masses but in practice it not to work it was a transcendent failure the majority of the masses remained uneducated so there was no provision for mass education but in the indigenous system of education before the arrival of the british provided education to the masses to the at, at least at the elementary level the masses got education in the indigenous educational system before the arrival of the british most of these indigenous educational institutions were attached with religious institutions called tolls and madrasas hindus were educated at elementary level at the tolls attached to the temples and muhammadans were educated at the madrasas but in the english system of learning introduced by the british there was no provision for education for the masses even at the elementary level the main beneficiary of the english system of learning introduced by the british was the middle class the downtrodden communities did not got the opportunity of education so the gap in the society widened with the introduction of the english system of learning only the middle and upper class of the hindus got the benefit of the english system of learning downtrodden communities remained backward and the british did not give any importance to the study of science and technology as you know science and technology are required for the development of the any modern nation but in the curriculum of schools and colleges the british purposefully avoided the teaching of science and technology the british feared that with the the teaching and the study of science and technology modern industries would develop in india it was against the interests of the british so they did not promote the teaching of science and technology in schools and colleges whatever may be the purpose of education was political it was anglicist or the orientalist that is strengthening of the british administration in india was the aim the macaulay was clearly mentioned that the aim of the introduction of the english system of education was to create a class of indians 
for helping the body shades. It was not for the upliftment, intellectual upliftment or the material development of the Indians. The Anglicist wanted it through Western learning, while the Orientalist wanted it through Oriental learning. The Orientalist also wanted to introduce Oriental learning for providing Oriental learning to the civil servants so they would be better at their job. So both of them wanted to strengthen British administration in India. With the introduction of the English system of learning, English began to provide as a language, at least among the educated Indians, as a common language to communicate with each other. Earlier, there was no common language among the Indians belonging to different parts of the country to communicate with each other. But English provided as a common language to the Indians belonging to different parts of the country to communicate with each other. No doubt, the introduction of the Western learning in India resulted in the development of nationalist feelings among the Indians. The Indians began to aware of American Revolution, the ideals of the French Revolution, democracy, parliamentary system of learning and it resulted in the development of nationalist feeling among the Indians in later, especially in 1870s. Now these are the major questions. What do you mean by Anglicist Orientalist controversy, recommendations of Charles Hood and a critical appreciation of the English system of learning introduced by the British. Thank you students for watching this class. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude, immoral, vulgar and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets. <laughs>